Greetings everyone, and welcome to this introduction of the Mask Node, which is a free download. The link is in the description below the video. And it's basically just an improvement over the past Edge Detect node that I had. This has way more features, and it's a really easy way to add some pretty incredible detail to your models. And you can press Tab to look inside of the node group to see how everything is working. But once you've downloaded it, open a new blend file, and then append it by going to File and Append. Now go to where you downloaded it to. Now select the mask node.blend. And there's two ways of doing this. You can either go to the node tree and download the mask group, or you can just go to material and download mask underscore base material. And if you select this method, then just append this from the library. Uh, now if I open up my shader editor, you'll see that the default cube already has a material applied to it. But if we go to our Material tab, we can go to this Material little drop box here and select the Mask Base Material instead. Now let's take a look at some of these settings. To start, we have the Damage Mask, uh, and it has two value sliders, the first of which is the Damage Scale, which is pretty self-explanatory. And the next is the damage fade value, which uh, softens the edge and the contrast between those two values. And this is a very easy and fun way to design these kinds of damaged walls. Uh, but just to show you what I'm doing here, um, the setup is really quite simple. We're just mixing a concrete and brick texture and their corresponding roughness and normal maps, all with mix RGB nodes. And then the factor is that uh, damage mask. I've also plugged that damage mask value into a bump node, which creates a little bit of depth there between the concrete and the brick. Now, if I move the lamp around, you can kind of see that, although the effect isn't very strong. Uh, so something that we can do to make that effect stronger is actually increase the uh, damage fade value. And now that shadow and highlight detail is a lot more noticeable. Next up is the Edge Mask, and this has four value sliders. The first is the Edge Scale, and it's important to note that when you take this all the way up, you'll see a lot of that sampling effect. The next slider is the Edge Noise, and you can crank this all the way up to be very distorted, but I find it most useful to use in smaller values so that it creates this wave-like effect, sort of an inconsistency and in thickness along, the, uh, along those edges. Under the edge noise, we have edge scratches, which is supposed to simulate damaged edges. So this is particularly useful with things like, you know, hard metal surfaces. If you crank this all the way up, you'll see that you actually get a little bit of distorted noise all over. And this can be particularly useful if you're combining, say, metal and rust. And finally, we have the edge frequency, which just adds a few breaks in between the edge wear. This is a simple door model that has a very boring and flat texture to it. It's just a painted white wood texture using a roughness map and a normal map. But let's take a look at what it looks like using the edge mask. Mixing it with a dark wood texture and using the edge mask as the mix factor, it looks a million times better. Just like before with the edge detect node, this will also recognize loose parts of the mesh and add those edges along uh, those intersecting points. It'll also, because it's generated coordinates, just add the edges as you're modeling. So if you extrude, for instance, it just adds those edges along to any sharp corner. Next, we have the ground dirt mask. And this has two value sliders. One increases the height of the ground dirt, and the next one increases the scale of the noise. Let's come back to our door model, and we'll duplicate this mix RGB that's going into the base color of the material node, and we'll plug that dark wood color into the bottom input, and this time we'll use that ground dirt mask as the mix factor. And we're starting to see that effect, but let's increase the ground dirt height. Okay, and now we've created this effect where the, the paint is a little more worn off at the bottom of the door, which I think looks pretty nice. 
Let's move on to the leaking mask. And the leaking mask will ignore any faces that are facing the Z direction. So it's only going to affect the sides. And we have these two value sliders that will affect the, the length or the amount and then the, the scale of that leaking effect. Just like in the previous example, we're using two textures. In this case, it's painted metal and rust, and it's being masked by that edge mask. But I wanna add leaking to this as well. So I can duplicate this mix RGB node and plug in the rust texture into the bottom input. And this time the mix factor will be the leaking mask. Okay, so it immediately looks better, but I think I want to increase the length of it, or the amount, slightly. And I think in this instance, a value of 3 looks really nice. And finally, we have the Moss Mask, which there's no way to customize this. It's more of a preset, uh, and I just added it because I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so right now I'm just mixing this uh, stone texture with a... Uh, moss texture and I'm using that moss mask and if we add some bump to it we can actually see what this is doing it's a very similar to the uh, the ground dirt mask except it has these sort of viney branches that come up along the side and even over the top of the model which I think is a pretty cool effect and hopefully you guys will find some use for it so that's it guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you find a lot of uses for the mask node. Uh, if you did like it, please like and subscribe. And also let me know in the comments below what other kinds of masks you would like to see me include. I have thought about doing some more presets, things like snow and dust, and I have a few others in mind as well. Uh, but let me know if you come up with some interesting ideas, I'd love to try to include them. So cheers guys, have a wonderful New Year's.